Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! If you've gotten this one as a gift under your Christmas tree, chances are high many people got this one as a gift. You've come at the right place to find out how to use it. Is it any good or is there anything even better? If you have found it sometime down the road, don't worry, we are doing a detailed review where I will show you if this telescope is worth the money. It's the Bresser Skylux 60 slash 700. In Europe we call it Lidl Scope because Lidl sells it quite often. They used to sell several other models, but this one is brand new, it's changed a little bit. They've made a lot of improvements. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, I'm a, I, at least I consider myself a serious amateur astronomer. If you look at my big telescopes, I think they kind of prove the point. <laughs> you don't buy this unless you're serious with the Kobe. But still, I like to review budget-oriented equipment because many people tell me, what should I buy my kid? I have a seven-year-old kid. Should I buy him this little thing or should I invest a little bit more money? If you are serious about astronomy, of course, I have several recommendations like an 8-inch Dobsonian, maybe the 130mm Dobsonian. But still people tell me, I don't want to put $300, $400 into the hobby. I have 50, 100 bucks. I just want to see the moon, the sun, the planets. Should I go with this or not? Well, instead of me talking and yapping about it, let me show you what you can actually see with this telescope. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters, right? You know, you don't even have to wait for the night to use this nice little telescope. Look at how amazing pictures it produces when looking at the distance in the city. I was truly amazed. Also, here in these pictures, you can see I'm using the eyepieces that come with the telescope. 60 millimeters of aperture, what is, uh, I can only consider a cheap glass, I was not expecting a lot. Here you start to get the idea that this telescope really is punching a lot above its weight. And of course, if you use it on the moon, have a look. Again, really, really nice pictures. Keep in mind, I'm not using my eyepieces for some of these because I wanted to show you just how much powerful you can get out of this telescope. I'm using a cheap camera, which plugs in into this telescope, into my laptop, and then you do a video. But still, you get the idea of how nice image it produces given its size and price. Again, during the day, you can use it for the sun. You put the sun filter, which is included in the telescope, and it's amazing. Look, <laughs> I could really see the whole of the sun into the eyepiece with the 12 meter included. Saw some uh, sunspots. Again, very, very nice. What about the planets? The planets get a little bit tricky. Uh, tricky especially for me to take a picture and show you just how nice they are but in the eyepiece they're pretty good keep in mind they will be very very small especially saturn and weak but you will be able to see that it's saturn and it has some rings no question about it jupiter jupiter is really nice given the size of this uh, nice little telescope i even managed to shoot a video of it Process the picture and look, you can clearly see the two bands of Jupiter. Now what about other objects outside of the solar system? Can you look at something else? Of course, I was able to see really nice Orion just outside of my balcony. Globular clusters, you will be able to see them pretty nicely as small diamonds over there in the distance. Open clusters, the Pleiades. Yeah, you can easily see at least 50 objects what i can recommend to you is finding some book for astronomy for binoculars that one will give you a really nice overview of, of objects that you can see nicely with this one why for binoculars because binoculars typically also have 50 to 60 millimeters of aperture but in this case the main advantage here is that the focal ratio is quite long so the image is really free and nice of chromatic aberrations it's clear for the given aperture and I think for a kid or somebody who just wants to spend, I don't know, a night or two per month or per two, it should be really, really nice. Now that I have shown you what you can actually see with it, let's see what is inside of the box of this nice little package. It comes nicely packed in an outside box, so no issues ordering it online. Don't worry, it will arrive just fine. We have our standard selection of eyepieces, 
and accessories. We'll cover the details later, no worry about it. Okay, time to get a little bit technical for those of you who are interested in this kind of thing. I have to warn you, astronomy is not just about a plug and play, but if you really want to extract the maximum value of a telescope like this, you should have at least a basic understanding of the equipment it comes with and the equipment that you can buy. They call this a diagonal. In this case, the best thing that I really like about this cheap telescope is it comes with 1.25 inch diagonal. What this means is this telescope is compatible with like 99% of eyepieces on the market. The biggest issue with small telescopes is usually they will have something like 0 0.985 uh, inch um, diagonal, making it incompatible with other eyepieces. You have to buy adapters. It's just, it doesn't make sense anymore if you have to put a lot of money into it. With this one, with this one, I can even put my expensive $100 eyepieces into it and it will provide amazing views. But what this also means, you can buy a cheap eyepiece like the SV Boni Red Lines for like 20 bucks, maybe the 20 millimeter or 15 millimeter. They have double the field of view than the eyepiece this telescope comes with. In this case, I can highly recommend investing another maybe 20, 30 dollars into one more nice eyepiece so that you can fully enjoy this telescope at its limit. Next, we have a Barlow, two by Barlow. With this one, every eyepiece will double its magnification. I'm happy to report that it's not a useless piece of plastic. It's really nice and it works well, especially with the 20 millimeter eyepiece. With the four millimeter, it's too much magnification. But with the 20 millimeter that is included, you can get some nice double magnification. Then we have a four millimeter eyepiece. This one is ideal for the planets. It will provide a lot of magnification, but it's a little bit difficult to look through it. So maybe, maybe just stay with the 20 millimeter and the two by Barlow. I think that should be enough. Next, we have the best eyepieces in the whole set, the 20 millimeter. It's Huygens, so just something like 38, 40 degrees of field of view. But hey, for this money, what do you want? Again, the good news is you can buy a proper eyepiece. You can check my video on budget eyepieces to see what uh, it is all about. Then this was a surprise. It's called erecting eyepiece. The first time I've seen it. What this does is correct for the mirroring of the image. So looking through this one, the image will be perfect. Size perfect, orientation perfect. So it's ideal for observing on the horizon for terrestrial observing as they as they call it and my favorite accessory a sun filter a real sun filter you can use the telescope over the day and to be honest that's like the main reason that i'm actually keeping this telescope because i don't want to drag my 12 inch every time there's a sunspot on the sun i just want to pick this one quickly on the balcony have a look at the sun maybe even do some videos of the sun it's really nice. I mean, many times on AliExpress, this one alone will cost you $20, something like this, yeah? It's a bottom film uh, a filter and it comes with a telescope. So <laughs> if you don't see it yet, I am really impressed with this nice little piece of technology. Don't get me wrong, a 130 millimeter Dobsonian is still going to kick this one out of the water any single day and night of the week. But I paid $40 for it, maybe $45 on a sale. You go to Facebook Marketplace, you will see many of these selling for $40. $40. <laughs> That's like half the prices for single eyepiece, the ones that I reviewed the last time. Now, for those of you which are a bit more experienced, I know what you're thinking. Hey, well, the telescope is nice and well, but what about the tripod? I'm not even going to call it a mount. That's just, just it's just a tripod. Good news. I'm also happy with the tripod. The tripod is really stable for its weight and size. Sure, when you find the object, it takes a little bit like three, four, maybe five seconds for, to stabilize. It's a bit shaky. But after those five seconds, it's stable. Finding objects is also pretty good because left and right, uh, it has a really nice bearing pretty high quality so it's very smooth it's not janky it's not nothing and up and down also called altitude 
they have a really nice innovation here. This very firm rod, which is keeping the telescope really, really stably in the vertical position. And my favorite piece, if you want to minorly adjust it up and down, you just turn with this nice little screw and it's adjusting up and down. I don't know if many other telescopes have it. I know in the previous iterations of the so-called little scope, it was not good. It was the weak point, always the mount, always the tripod, impossible to use, difficult to find objects. But this time, I think they solved it, yeah? Maybe it's just that I'm more experienced, so I'm able to work with it a little bit better. But I think with some practice, it's not that worse than finding stuff with my Dobsonia. Finding objects can be tricky because it comes with a small finder, which is, to be honest, a bit difficult to use. So you might want to think about replacing it with a red dot finder or even better, buy some very low magnification eyepiece, something like a Plossel 32 millimeter or Plossel 40 millimeter. And in that case, you will be able to find the objects much easier. At the top, it has some kind of a holder for cell phones. To be honest, I think this is just pure gimmicky. I don't use it. This is the first time I put it on just to show you how it's supposed to work. <laughs> uh, but I just don't see it very practical because uh, yeah, it, you're much better off uh, putting your cell phone in your hand and just looking at it and finding objects uh, like it over there. I know it's supposed to be tracking or something, but yeah. See, when I move the telescope up and down, this whole thing is not moving. So yeah, maybe left and right a little bit with the sensors. Just forget about it. Not happy about this piece. They could have saved some money. So who is this for? Should you buy it? I think it's mainly for people who want to approach things casually. Let's just say I'm somebody who lives in an apartment, has a balcony. Every now and then there's a nice moon over the horizon, really clear. And I'm just unhappy that I'm not able to have a look at the moon. People like that definitely buy it. <laughs> During the day you heard there's a big sunspot on the sun. Again, you want to have a look, a quick look. Again, perfect, buy it. Your kid is interested in astronomy and wants to have a look at the objects in the sky. Should you buy it, this uh, for them? Yes. If they are not happy with this one, chances are they are not going to be happy with the bigger telescopes as well. Because if you are not happy after looking at the moon, the sun, Jupiter, Saturn through this telescope, I don't think there is any kind of visual telescope in the world that is going to make you happy. This hobby is more than the quality of the picture that you are seeing. This hobby is about being able to find the object easily, without much uh, frustration having to look at it, seeing some craters on the moon that you can recognize, seeing some sunspots, seeing the two bands of Jupiter, seeing the rings around Saturn, even though they will be very, very small, like a small uh, blueberry <laughs> in the distance, but still, it's unmistakable. There are the bands, there are the rings. You will be able to see it with this nice little telescope. And then, if your kid or yourself, you want to take it to the next level, well, then you're welcome to watch my next videos on a more serious approach to astronomy, which is the Heritage 130 and the 8 inch Dobsonia. And of course, after you spend a couple of more years, you are welcome to join our 12 inch Dobsonian club, which is for. <laughs> Let's just say it's for chronically uh, serious astronomers. Maybe that's not always a good thing. <laughs> that's why I'm keeping it, yeah? That's why I'm keeping it. I don't always want to go out and uh, deal with a 12-inch uh, cannon that is 35 kilograms. I just want to have a quick look at the moon. When I'm done, the best thing about it, I can just put it in my clothes cabinet. And that's all the space it takes in my room. What do you think? Have you gotten this one as a gift? Are you happy? Are you an experienced astronomer? Do you want to buy this one as a second grab-and-go telescope? Let me know down below in the comments. I'll also put the link to Lidl in case you live in Europe. Other than that, yeah. Enjoy Christmas. Enjoy Happy New Year. And if you are watching this in the middle of the summer, I'm pretty sure I look ridiculous in this. Uh, <laughs> over and out.
next time I have great news. SV Bonnie sent me some free stuff, but mainly SV Bonnie is sending me their narrowband UHC filter and their broadband UHC filter, both of them two inch. So I can't wait to put them into my 30 millimeter eyepiece. Have a look at Orion and settle it once and for all, at, le at least in my eyes. Is a narrowband UHC filter worth the money or we can all deal with the budget UHC filter that we all know and love from SV Bone Angel Eyes and all the others. Over and out, if you're a beginner, don't worry about it. UHC filters, that's for later down the road when you start looking at nebulas and stuff with a more serious telescope. Bye.